This week on The Scene, Karen Halverson and Tom Stinson. By the age of 16, Karen was already playing clarinet, accordion, guitar, ukulele, harpsichord, and piano. She still plays all those instruments, but admits that the guitar is her favorite. Like so many others, she put her musical ambitions on hold due to family and school commitments, but after a stay in hospital, she discovered her musical side and started writing her own songs again. Just blame it on the I think my musical interest began at a very, very young age, probably around the age of two or three. And my grandmother was very musical and played the accordion and the fiddle. And I was always so interested in listening to her play. And every time she brought out that little button accordion, I'd want to play it. And she'd let me hold it and play with it. And I bothered my parents probably from the time I was three years old to start music lessons and they finally started me when I was in, uh, seven years old. I always liked to sing and play so about grade seven when we started guitar in school that's when I started singing and learning songs. And I started writing, I think I was about 14 years old when I first started writing a few songs. It didn't last long. I. Um, Went on. We moved uh, to a different city, a different school. Eventually, I got married at a very early age, and the music kind of got put on hold. I ended up going back to school, to university, and I was working at the same time. And I had a, a daughter at an early age. I was 19. 
So that music career kind of got put on hold when uh, I had to work and go to school and raise a daughter. I actually started writing about three years ago and I had all these songs that I'd written and I wondered what I was going to do with them. And my husband was a great advocate for getting me started and trying to get me out in front of people and bring out the musical instruments and play a song here and there and I was very shy. So eventually I found on the internet uh, the songwriting competitions that I entered. There's one in the United States that's an international competition. It's worldwide and it's called the Song of the Year competition. And I entered that and in three years I've received seven awards from them. Well I realized they liked what they were hearing as far as the writing goes so I uh, was constantly being pushed to get out there and you know try singing and and I like I said I was just painfully shy at first and I did do some open mic um, singing at a restaurant in Peachland and I guess that's where I finally got a little bit of confidence up to keep going and I only started performing in public last September with the West Bank Country Opry. Seems it's taking far too long to decide where you belong if there's doubt in your mind, then let me change your mind. My love is strong for you. I would never lie to you. I'm waiting with open heart, but the weight tears me apart. So fly away with me. Come be. Just how much you mean to me I never wanted you more You're the one I'm waiting for Please don't doubt what you feel I assure you it is real I promise you won't fall For anything at all So join me in the dance You just gotta take the chance how much you mean to me I never wanted you more You're the one I'm waiting for As each day rolls on Our love is growing strong And I sense in you You feel the same way too So throw your doubts away We have waited for this day Let's build this dream together, you and me forever. So fly away with me, come be with me tonight. I want to hold you close until the morning light. Darling, can't you see just how much you mean? About uh, two and a half years ago, I had to go through a, a really difficult surgery. And I was in the hospital for about two months. And I arrived home at the end of January. And in March, I got a letter from the um, Song of the Year competition letting me know that I had reached the semi-finalist stage and my songs were going to be forwarded on to Nashville. And I've got a letter from Nashville from a producer there offering me a songwriting contract. 
So through the healing process, this was a great thing to happen. It gave me the incentive to get better and just start writing again. And I really had a lot of inspiration after that surgery. It has been um, a godsend, really. It's, it's really helped me heal. It helped me uh, through a really difficult time. And I think it's great now. I'm back to writing and recording and working on the next album. I've had two songs produced in Nashville in the past six months. One was released at the end of October. It was a song that I wrote for a man to sing. So that's on the first album that came out. It's called If You Leave Me. The second song is one I performed tonight. It was called Come Be With Me Tonight. And that was released just about a month ago out of Nashville. And it's on an album, uh, the Women in Country album, From the Heart. And now I've just signed a contract to publish two more of my songs. And they're in the final stages of getting preparations ready to record those. And they'll be out in about six months' time on a new album called Why Love. It took a long time for me to get there. And most people don't start singing at this age in their life. They're usually finished by this age of their life, and I just seem to be starting. But it's all good, and I'm, I'm enjoying it and having a great time. It's never too late. I put that right on my website. It's, I, I just encourage anybody to pick up an instrument, it doesn't matter how late in life, and share your music. It's so much fun and so rewarding. I saw you hesitate at the door then you walked right on through the store. You gave me a look I never mistook. It was clear as an open book. My, oh my, what am I in for? It's clear what you wanted when you came through the door. And life gets a little bit crazy once in a while.
Tom Stinson is a prolific music educator in the Okanagan, on top of being an acclaimed performer. He considers himself a better guitarist than a singer. In fact, his first album was entirely instrumental. But he introduced vocals on his second album and does sing now. Why? Well, he says, sometimes you just have to say something. Peacefully I slept. I was interested in learning classical guitar just for being able to expand the technique and also I didn't have a, a jazz background, so usually if you want to do post-secondary in guitar, it's either jazz or classical. So classical was the more oriented to what I, what I was doing, but I mean, I started out playing. I, what got me, really what got me into classical guitar was because I started out as a teenager playing a lot of heavy metal. And they're very connected, right, and musically, in essence. Like, a lot of, a lot of the, the metal from the 80s had a lot of neoclassical influences and parts in it. My folk tradition that I came from in my family, my dad, I mean, everything growing up was, you know, bluegrass in the house. And then I, of course, the teenager got into rock and heavy metal and stuff. But that was still, that was the core that I'd come from. So that always seeped in. So then when I got writing, all of, even when I was at school, all of my writing would always end up having this folk influence in it, no matter how, you know, I don't know, they always say like serious music or whatever, right? And how much of that you were trying to, to do, it always had this folk element. So now I, I use my classical technique that I studied, but for more folk-oriented music. I've learned so much more from teaching than I ever did as a student. Like I've learned far more as a teacher. And I get to teach in such different, diverse areas, right? Like I have. I'm a faculty member at the Vernon Community Music School. I'm a faculty member at Aberdeen Hall Prep School here in Kelowna. And then I still have a private studio in Kelowna one day a week as well. And uh, so I get to do classroom at Aberdeen. So at Aberdeen Hall, I get to do classroom and we're starting a new composition program. So if finally the composition stuff that I studied at university, I'm actually gonna get to you know, teach in a classroom setting and we're putting in a studio everything for that as well so we're going to be doing the composition and a recording combined in a class so I get to do that there and I get to do ensembles and have the kids 
working on, on everything there, and we working on arranging and so forth. So that's, I, I'm, I'm really quite passionate about that. But then performing, there's no, you know, there's no rush, like having a great performance and having a, a great audience and the response and the interaction and just that communion of, of what the music is when that happens too. So it's hard to, yeah, it's hard to pick a favorite. Instrumental writing is like the one song, one of the songs that I, I played today was called Quiet Strength. That song was about my grandfather. So when my grandfather passed away, um, he was really a, a really like a heroic figure in my life. And uh, when he passed away, it was really hard to try and just kind of just to, to, to capture what he had meant in my life. And so trying to express that through words, I wasn't able to. I just, I, I couldn't do that. So that, that piece just came and it just, it just came out. And, and that just came from 
thinking about him, as I thought about him and different things over the course of, you know, well, our, you know, my life, the time that I got to spend with him and things that I learned from him, it just came out on the guitar as I was doing that. And then uh, other times it can be, you know, uh, the other, one of the other instrumental pieces that I played today too is called Sunset. And I was sitting on the edge of Mission Creek Canyon watching the sun go down and it just, it just happened. So sometimes the songs, I, I don't really even feel like I write them. It's, you're just in the experience and it's a kind of more of a conduit, I guess. And then other times you labor over things a bit. You get an idea that you really like and it's just not coming together and it takes a while and then you get another idea and then they start to form together and then you, you use the, the tools that you learn, you know, like so you get to break out the toolbox from, you know, studying composition and start putting things together with that. So I, I like it when it's, when it just happens. That's the best for me. But Right now, like I said, I was, I'm focusing on getting an album recorded. I've got a bunch of material written, but I, you know, kind of massaging it to be what I want it to be. And so I've got, I can't remember if I've got three or four tracks completed now for that one. Um, but that should be by the end of the summer, I am expecting to have that album done. And then the project with Mark in the fall. And then I'm back teaching again, full time as well in, in September. And then Leo will be coming back as well at the end of the end of the summer and we'll be seeing what's happening in the performing side of things with her as well. This summer is the first summer that I've started recording another album of my own. Um, so I've started on, well, this will be my third album. And then in the fall, I've got another project that I'm starting with Mark Greenhall. Um, he's moved from Kelowna now out to, to Salmon Arm and he lives out near closer to me and we're starting a thing where we're going to do a fusion of my folk and ambient folk instrumental music and his electronica music and we're going to do a, a fusion project with that so I'm quite excited about that one that's going to be a lot of fun. information on this week's performers, find them on the web. How could a girl ever lose But when you showed up for our date You were two hours past 